La 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 la. Hey everyone, and welcome to my design studio. I'm Jens Ensu, and today we are shooting episode three in the series where I design the new Enso custom knife. Everything here started with an episode where I designed, or let me rephrase that, I did 20 sketches on a timer. And the intention with that episode was just to check, is that even possible? Is it possible to do 20 sketches in 15 minutes and come out with a result that is just barely usable? In episode two, we actually went ahead and took a couple of those sketches and tried to turn them into designs. In the end, it turned out that I combined two ideas into one and came up with some ideas. So the, my first initial sketch where I liked the result was this one. In the second episode, I started continue sketching and suddenly this line appeared here and everything just started to make sense. Design work is such a weird thing where sometimes an idea just happens on paper and it's almost like a one shot and we are so close to a final product. Other times it takes time and time and time and you have to let an idea simmer and you have to just go back and back and back and change. Maybe this project is one of those where it takes a little more time, but the change from my ordinary process is, well, I'm speaking directly to you and you're seeing the project as it unfolds. The last thing we reached in the previous episode was this step here where I took the sketch into CAD, I started drawing somewhat more restricted, and then from the CAD drawing, continued sketching by hand. I mentioned that I really needed a light table, so since last Tuesday, I went ahead and bought this light table. And while I haven't used it all that much yet, I can say for sure that I am sold. One of my goals for 2024 is to do a lot more hand sketching, and uh, this light table will definitely come in handy. Just to quickly explain what a light table does for you is you have a drawing, you want to continue working on a specific uh, detail. You take a blank piece of paper, lay it on top, and now you can tr start tracing whatever was functioning well in the previous drawing, and then you can start adding changes. So it speeds up the process. It's kind of like working in CAD, but on paper. It's much easier, much faster, and you can change little details really, really quickly. And, and I think for me, at least while doing design work, it's important that you are able to move forward very quickly. Other than that, I just love that such an important part of my job you can handle with a pen or pencil. That's really all you need, a piece of paper and a pen, and you're going, and you can do that everywhere. Yes, what are you doing? So, last episode we left off where I decided this needs a Spyderco hole. I've been doing design work for Spyderco holes. I've been... <laughs> I've been doing design work for Spyderco in the past, and this one, for instance, is the Spyderco Sulo that I designed for them back in 2012, I like to say. And being that the design centers around the opening function, and it has such a distinctive look, that requires something out of the design as well. So what I did here is I took the drawing where we reached last time and just added the spider co hole. And now the next step is to start fine tuning the overall feel and the overall lines in the design before I'm adding any details. So that's what I'm doing in CAD. What you will see me doing here is I do some sketching by hand, turn around, do a little changes on the, the drawing in CAD, then return to sketching by hand back and forth. And I'll be doing that a ton throughout this episode because now it's it's really just the small details that needs changing. So from this drawing here, basically I just added the spider co hole where I liked it positioned. 
So what I found is that my ideal position of the opening hole differs from Sal Glesser, who was the president of Spyderco and, and he who invented the Spyderco hole and the pocket clip and all that. He has a very specific rule, or at least to my knowledge, he had that the center of the pivot and the center of the opening hole should be 27 millimeters apart. I generally go by a smaller distance and it's really a matter of of the arc that your your thumb will take when you open the blade and i just found that for my designs for my custom designs 22 23 millimeters distance between the pivot and the center of the opening hole just works better but it's quirky little things like that that takes up space in my mind <laughs> And uh, Jens, I just have one question uh, about the, the difference between uh, working uh, with the hand drawings and working with CAD. Yeah. Um, you mentioned that it's about the small fine details, but why is it that the finer details are easier to do on, on the computer? Well, often I can look at a line and see, for instance, the, the arc of the back of the blade maybe there's just something that annoys me about that line and i can't specifically say what it is maybe it's it has a kink in there maybe it's the curve moves in in some way that i'm not 100 percent satisfied with and with cad tools it, it's really easy just to to pull uh, the line back and forth do some printouts and then then see where if I had to do it by hand, often that would require that I trace the entire design once more. So, so CAD is really important. For me, it's not a standalone tool. I could not design a knife in CAD alone and come out with as good as a result as I do when I sketch by hand and using CAD at the same time. Okay. Also, designing by hand alone it's possible, but for me, especially working with folders and, and for me, the fact that it needs to be beautiful in its open position, but also in its closed position, let's face it, a folder is closed 99% of its time. So it needs to be beautiful. The line needs to flow very nicely when it's closed. And that specifically is so much easier to handle when you work with CAD, open, close the blade, make small adjustment, open and close the blade, and so on. So now I'm adding the Spyderco hole uh, to, the, um, to the design, and then I will take it one step further. Another difference in working by hand sketching and working with CAD is shown exactly here. Once you draw a design out in CAD, you're really stripping the design of the sketch down to its bare essential there's no room for interpretation whereas here with this drawing here which is the cat drawing but i added hand sketches to it now my mind will start interpreting my sketches and allowing my brain to consider is this the right line could i change just a little bit could i consider the scribed line here or the shadow here as a shape it starts to take a three-dimensional shape and that's also something that hand sketching is really good at and CAD not so much at least not as long as you're working in two dimensions but working in three dimensions in CAD just takes so much longer and it takes so much more dedication to your original design you need to be sure that the overall line is complete. So here, what I did was I printed out the rough idea of the design. There's still room for plenty changes here, but I also printed it out in open and closed position to see, for instance, we have one of my pet peeves and this in this area here, where the blade and the handle meets in the closed position. This area needs to be refined and if the lines differ i want them to differ so much that you know it's not by coincidence but by choice so a lot of what i'm doing is 
I would like to say gut feeling and just instinct around my design philosophy. So maybe I'm not able to put words on every single choice I do. Often it will just happen. And that's what you see here as well. While I'm working, things are just happening. That's what we saw in the previous episodes as well. The first episode, that was strictly muscle memory. Doing 20 sketches in 15 minutes, that's just way too little time to actually spend a lot of thought behind each sketch. The previous episode where I took those sketches and continued working with them, that's when you start adding thought to your process. Now, the details, we actually back to gut feeling and instinct when you start changing the line just ever so slightly, that it's, it's, a, it's a feeling. Does it feel right? Does it feel almost right? So those changes are so subtle that I don't always even consider them. They just seem to happen. One thing, and that is, I guess, kind of a popular phrase in any artistic work, and that is to kill your darlings. And I've tried so many times to favor a specific detail of a design, but maybe that detail drags everything down. Not the detail itself, but because the detail might have had some specific meaning or I loved how this detailed look, for instance, around the opening hole. But does the design allow or become better because of this detail. And that's where I, I really need to consider. And one of the issues, if you will, with this design right now is the position of the opening hole in the closed position. It's very deep into the frame. I prefer much like on this design that the opening hole doesn't interfere much with the scale itself. Will it be possible with this design We'll have to see about that. Right now, it interferes quite a bit. That might become a feature in the design. Maybe I will take that and make into a super nice detail going forward. Or maybe I need to kill a darling and maybe this is not the specific design that ends up having a spider go hole. In the end, if I'm not 100% satisfied with the design, it won't be made or I will hate making it. And so that, that is years worth of experience that tells me, is this something that I would enjoy making? And if it's not, I won't take it further until I change enough that I can see, okay, now we reach a point where I'm actually super happy with the result. So, We've reached a point in the design process, which is really not that far into this episode, but now is where I really need to use all my focus on getting the small details all the way correct. Frankly, it's very difficult for me to do that, putting focus here while actually talking about it. <laughs> so um, let's uh, put some music on. You won't hear it, I will. It's so important for my creative flow. Uh, we will uh, let the cameras roll for the next hour or so and Anas will check in with me every now and again see where we are. But um, for the next few minutes what you'll see is me just working on the details of the knife. All right Jens, can we get a status update? It's actually going really well now. I'm at a point where I'm changing the lines just ever so slightly. And just from a distance, you're looking at three identical designs down here. But from here to here, I changed the tip a little bit. From here to here, I changed the curve here ever so slightly. And I changed this front ever so slightly. And since you can't see it, and the light table won't show up as well on camera. I just merged these three drawings together. And, and as you can see here, it's really, really minor details I'm changing. It's, it's a matter of a millimeter here or there. It's really what takes the design from, in my opinion, and this is all my opinion, right? It takes the design from being eh, to being, ooh, it's, and it, it's, 
just tiny, tiny details. So I'll just continue this process and you can ask me again in 20 minutes. If you want to support this channel, you can visit my website right now and order your arms. I just started adding a, just a little bit of details. I added a pivot color because, well, that's what I usually do. I'm starting to work in this area here where the choil meets the finger ramp on the handle here. Starting to see something that I really, really like. And I adjusted the lines just enough that I'm starting to enjoy what I mentioned before with, with the opening hole making quite a bit of uh, noise in the handle. But now I've changed the lines to a point where I'm actually thinking that we are very, very close to having a outer perimeter that's set. Once the outer perimeter is set, then I can start thinking about the lock geometry, lanyard details and all that. But I can't do that before, that, uh, before I reach a point where I'm satisfied with the outer perimeter. And by outer perimeters, I simply mean the outline of the design. If you see this in silhouette, that's what I mean by outer perimeters. That doesn't mean that everything is set in stone yet, because if I come up with a, a hidden lanyard detail, then maybe some of this will change, but the overall design language, I'm super happy about at this point. I don't know if you're feeling it, but I just felt a sudden change in energy. It's quarter past four in the afternoon, which is always point of time of the day where the energy level is starting to drop. But I reached a point with the design now where I'm just overly enthusiastic about it. If you compare where we left it in the last episode with this pencil sketch or pen sketch on top of the rough drawing and to here, there's really not all that much difference as seen from afar, but I just wasn't happy about it. It, it was close, but I wasn't happy. So I adjusted the lines ever so slightly here and there, started adding a little detail. I put the uh, almost trademark um, pivot ring in. I put that on almost all my custom designs. That started making it an Anso. Very cool. And I reached a point now where I'm starting to look at the design from either side. Now I need to decide, is this a frame lock? Is this a line lock or something completely different? That's, that's up in the air. I'm leaning towards a line lock at this point. What I do is I take the design and start looking at it from different, different angles. I start look at the corresponding lines. For instance, this choil here, if you follow the line, it, it, it matches with the handle. It's those little tiny details that makes a huge difference to me at this point. I'm holding my hand up against the drawing. Does it fit my hand? Does my index finger and the middle finger fit with the small corner I have here in, in the handle? Things are just starting to shape up. So at this point now, now is the time to add details and I want to add something cool for, for the lanyard. So the lanyard is something that I've been doing in multiple different variations. In, in the modern day, I have done more or less hidden lanyard details. To me, I rarely use a lanyard. And to those who don't know what a lanyard is, well, it's a piece of string that you tie to your knife that you can tie to your belt or around your wrist so you don't lose it in a stressful situation. I think it's absolutely needed to have an option to allow for a lanyard. I rarely use it. I use it when I go out in the woods or on a hike now and again. But I know that some people are in situations where it's absolutely critical for them to use it. Some also add a fob 
in lack of better terms, or a bead in a piece of string, which will make it a little easier to grab hold of when you remove it from your pocket. As well as the lanyard, I rarely use a fob on my knives, but I feel it's needed. So with the modern versions or the modern ANSO language, design language, I've done these semi-hidden lanyards here where the axis is actually below the scale. So when you see it from the side, there's no interference with the overall design and the lanyard detail is like something that grows out of the backspacer. With my more recent Spyderco designs, I've always felt that a round hole through the handle for the lanyard is something that adds a great detail in the language combining with the Spyderco hole. And I think I'm going to try and combine those two things. The Aros here is the newest design coming out of my shop. Even though this is shop built, it's still the newest design. And, and if you look here, while it's not a round hole, you have the chassis that comes through the scale, but rather than going all the way through the knife, it comes out of the back of the spacer here. So it becomes kind of a mix between the hole in the scale and uh, the somewhat hidden lanyard. So I'm actually thinking that this could be a cool feature on this design. It also gives a second benefit. And I mentioned this in, in the previous episodes circling around the Aros project, but it allows the clip to be positioned as far back on the handle as possible without having the lanyard hole interfere with the placement of the clip. And that's something I'm very focused on. So now I'm going to start sketching in the, the lanyard details and see where that leads me. So for now we're done with the CAD program and back on the light table for adding the last details or thought about details. And first it's the lanyard. That's something that can define or break the design if it's not done properly. Those small details, if, if it's just thrown in there without enough thought, that can really annoy everything around a design and, and just destroy at least the feeling for me. I think those last 10%, maybe it's only me who notices this, or maybe it's only a few customers out there who will notice, but let's just face it. I'm doing most of this for my own sake. And if I enjoy it, I have a pretty good feeling that somebody else will as well. One thing that I'm super careful about when designing knives is that I draw inspiration everywhere else than from the knife world because it's so easy to fall in love with the detail that you see somewhere else. If anything, and I, I draw inspiration, it's from my own work. Then I will look at all the designs and see if there's something that I can use again. But other than that, I've taught myself to seek inspiration everywhere else but in the area that I'm designing, just to make sure that my design is not inspired by somebody else's design. So I draw inspiration from traveling, from walking in nature, walking around on Manhattan uh, or in Manhattan, just seeking out a detail in a suitcase or in a building or wherever. N none of us live in a vacuum. So of course, somebody has influenced you. There's a saying that there's no original idea. Every single idea comes from two older ideas that is combined. So when doing work like this and really in later years, I, I stopped paying attention on what happens around me, around the company, around the companies that I designed for. I put attention on my work and that alone. And that has probably made my job a lot easier. Of course, I need to stay somewhat observant of what's going on in the market. But if I let myself be influenced by what's going on right now, then I'm 12 months behind. If I come up with something cool, 
and somebody else gets inspired by that that's cool but they're behind schedule because whatever they're designing i already designed that to me finding inspiration everywhere else but in the industry that is what brings out the new and interesting ideas and that's just something that's super important i think we have reached a point with this design now i'm super happy about where we are and i'm actually quite happily surprised by that because when we started the process i was kind of lukewarm around it i saw a lot of potential in the drawing where we where we stopped in the last episode but i just couldn't quite catch exactly where it should go but with just minor changes minor details just adding changing a little bit i reached the point where i'm super satisfied and i actually think this is one of my favorite des designs in your time maybe i'm biased i don't know but at this point i started sketching in the clip i started sketching in a lanyard detail more or less everything else in is in place next part is adding a lock function leaning towards the line lock but we'll see what happens. I think that part might happen off screen and the next time we're shooting, maybe I have something more to show you, maybe I don't and we'll take it from there, we'll see. This is really unscripted territory we are moving into and I'd like to show you as much of the process as possible. One thing I can tell you, this will turn into an answer custom, that's for sure. <music> This concludes today's episode. This was episode three in designing the new Ensu folder. If you enjoyed what you've seen so far, remember to hit like, subscribe, post a comment, and most important, please visit my website. If you liked what you've seen, support me by visiting the Ensu of Denmark.com. You'll find cool products like the Ensu Aros.